order of business will be to approve the minutes. I'm going to call on Commissioner Johnson for that. Mr. Chairman, I've read the minutes and looked them over and they seem to be in order, so I would move to approve. Thank you very much. I need a second. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Motion passed. I'm going to move the highway department up to the second spot because I don't think it'll take them very long. Welcome, Mr. Brooks. Good evening, everyone. I have for you tonight uh, <clears throat> a budget amendment that was approved at the road board meet at a, a February monthly road board meeting yesterday morning. Uh, it was unanimous. What you're seeing here, I believe, you have the same thing I have, is. We're going to move money from fund ending balance into our <clears throat> other contracted services, into our asphalt, our, and our diesel fuel, and our bridge construction. A little bit of uh, background on this. Uh, the other contracted services is where we get our striping money from. The um, asphalt is you know obviously the most significant and I'll come back to that to give you a little little more uh, ex explanation of why that why that is what it is our diesel fuel obviously kind of speaks for itself just because of the you know trend we seem to be in right now and then the bridge construction is where we pull our guardrail repair money from so that's another item where it's we, we've seen exponential increases because of the price of steel so let's go back to asphalt for just a moment. You see that, that I'm requesting uh, $2 million be moved from our fund balance into our asphalt line item. To just so that you're in the know, we typically try to accomplish resurfacing 40 to 45 road miles per, per year. So if we do that, we can put our road system as it exists right now on about a 15 year cycle. Some years we're not successful. Some years we've, we've had, I think our lowest year was 29 miles of resurfacing, but it depends on a lot of things. It depends on proximity to the vendor. A lot of times, as you know, the traffic is, is you know, something you have to deal with around here. And if we're a long way from the plant, then it just, it just takes more turnaround time for our, for our trucks. Another thing is the type of road that we might be resurfacing. Is it, is it a rural county road where we can just kind of sit down and go? Or is it a subdivision where there are a lot of intersections and cul-de-sacs? That's a lot, you know, a lot, lot slower. And then another thing to consider is uh, through the years, our our crews have gotten have gotten more proficient at what they do. We, we're just better at it. They're just better at it. So um, all those things combined with the fact that the per ton price, and this is you know in our truck, this is at the bin bin price, has gone up a third in the last in the last two years. It's gone up a third, but in the last year, it's it's gone up. The, the lion's share of that third has happened in the last year. We are starting to see a little bit of a, uh, some relief. It's, it's quick going up, it's kind of leveled off. Of course, this time of year, you know, they don't have to worry about what the price is because nobody's, nobody's vending mix right now. But uh, this, this past calendar year, we, we usually begin, I know you said it wasn't gonna take long, I apologize. This, <laughs> This, this past calendar year, we used to begin paving 1st of April. The weather was conducive to allow us to, to start about the 1st of March this year. So we paved from March until just before Christmas. 
and we we had a lot of weather uh, we had a lot of weather uh, opportunities that typically we get rained out more than we did this year but in our fiscal year we have already from july 1 until we quit i don't remember if it's december 12th 13th somewhere along in there we have already accomplished that 45 miles that we try to do annually so this money right here will allow us to do 16 or 18 more miles till we get our new operating budget in place so that's any questions i'll be happy to try to answer You've heard Mr. Brooks's request. Do we have a motion? If I could, Mr. Chairman, removing from ending fund balance, have you uh, talked to finance? Are you, we're going to be okay with the oh, yeah. fund we're, balance? Oh, we'll, yeah. Even when we move this money out, we'll still be 120% funded, something like that. Move to approve, Mr. Chairman. We, we have a motion and a second. I believe we better call the roll on this. Commissioner P. Yes. Mr. Anthony Johnson. Commissioner James. Yes. Commissioner Phil Dodd. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Yes. And Chairman P. Piercy. Yes. We have motion passes. Again, I apologize for taking up so much of your time, but I feel like numbers like this need an explanation so there you go thank you sir let's hear from the building codes department next i don't believe in doing it on a on a schedule we just mix it up how you doing <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna give you the monthly reports and then I'm gonna do a little recap for the last year. Uh, January of this year, our single family dwelling permits we issued were 64. Our total permits were 323. Uh, total building inspections performed were 1,695. Total zoning inspections were 109. Our school's facility tax for January was $404,955 that we collected. Development tax for January was $7,500. The fiscal year to date on the school's facility tax was $2,538,014.50. The fiscal year to date development tax was $116,250. Looking back over the last uh, couple of years to give you a, a, a kind of a recap, 2021 single family dwelling permits issued were 1,018. 2022 single family dwelling permits issued were 799, down 219. Uh, total permits 2021, 4,392. Total permits 2022 was 3,918, down 474 permits. Uh, the average square footage right now of a home being built, single family dwelling in, in the county, is 2,194 square feet. If you include the municipalities in the county, uh, Eagleville, Smyrna, Laverne, and Murfreesboro, that average goes up to about 2,416 square feet for average on the, on the single family dwellings. Any questions? Anyone have any questions for the building codes department? Seeing none, we'll need a motion to approve his report. We have a motion, we need a second. And a second. Everybody in favor say aye. Nice. Very well, motion passed. Thank you, Mark. from planning and engineering. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. 
uh, have our uh, normal report. I'm going to do things a, a little bit different uh, tonight. I usually do the lot inventory first, but I'm going to talk about the lot inventory, but then kind of move right into the year-end report, and they're kind of related. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the rezoning requests first. The County Commission will be considering three rezoning requests at next week's meeting. The first is by Jane Blair Myers for MGC Central Valley LLC. This is for an existing planned development at the intersection of Lebanon Pike and Central Valley Road. Size of the site's about 37 acres in size. This development's called the Crossings at Walter Hill. It was originally approved by the Board of Commissioners back in December of 2021. Uh, the breakdown I've provided to you as far as the number of units and the type of units, townhome versus detached single families in your agenda packets. We have seen the preliminary plan for the single family units and that has been approved through the Planning Commission. The issue is with the townhome units. They came uh, wanting to submit a site plan for the townhomes and they were changing things around pretty substantially. They were going from two to three bedroom townhomes to three to four bedroom. The unit uh, makeup was, was changing quite a bit, the number of units per building. Long story short, we felt that these changes that they were making were more than what could be approved administratively. So we instructed them at that point that they needed to do an amendment to the plan development. So that's what brings this before you. You can see the uh, proposed breakdown. Again, the number of units isn't changing, but the number of bedrooms is. Uh, there wasn't really much discussion on this item at the Planning Commission regarding the public hearing part of it. No one really spoke, but there were several questions that did arise at the Planning Commission. Uh, just a few things I will note. There were some discrepancies noted in the applicant's pattern book. One of them was the number of three bedroom units and four bedroom units in their revised pattern book was reversed based on what it was shown. Uh, there was also an additional three bedroom unit on the concept plan that was not uh, referred to in the legend. Uh, they have the, fixed all that. The pattern book that you have on your iPads today, uh, we just received a little uh, earlier this afternoon. I was able to kind of thumb through it and it looks like the changes that we asked them to make, they have made. Uh, they have also added more visitor parking in the common areas. Uh, and that was a concern uh, that we had as well. Again, after this discussion of the, the issues, uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this by a unanimous vote. So again, the number of units for this isn't changing. It was really just the townhome units, the bedrooms. That was the primary change in this. The second case is a piece of property located on Miller Road. This is on the west side of I-24 off of the Epps Mill Road exit. This is by John Brothers. Uh, this request comes partially uh, because of a zoning enforcement action. Uh, the applicant has been using a portion of this property as a storage area uh, illegally. Uh, he just started storing things on the property, so we've been trying to work with him over the course of several months to bring this into compliance. Uh, he's decided that he wanted to move through the zoning process so he could legitimize the use. Of course, we did tell him at that time, even before he applied, that if he did that, he was going to have to bring it up to compliance with county specifications. Uh, bottom line, one way or another, even if he didn't do anything, didn't rezone the property, he was going to have to clean it up. So the applicant was made aware of that. Um, most of the discussion at the Planning Commission, uh, there were several people that spoke about the condition of the property during the public hearing. Uh, the discussion focused primarily on the condition of the subject property and what steps the applicant would need to take to bring it into compliance with our regulations. Uh, we did explain, again, that regardless of the zoning of the property, they were going to have to clean it up one way or another. Uh, we did explain, though, that we would work with the applicant on the site plan approval, but they would have to be making progress on this. We just didn't want to see it be zoned a certain way that would allow the use and then him just not ever do anything on the property. So after discussion, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of that by a 8 to 1 vote. The third zoning case is for a piece of property located along Shelbyville Pike at the corner of Ellis Road. Uh, the applicant would like to zone this property. It's currently zoned residential, but he wants to build a small restaurant on the property. It's immediately across the street from the, I believe it's called the C&E Market, uh, located uh, directly on the other side of Ellis Road. The primary purpose of the planned development, other than just to specify the use, is they would like a smaller front setback along Shelbyville Pike. 
that's due primarily to the location of the septic uh, field lines that are on the property. They didn't want to push the building any further back and risk uh, destroying that uh, soil site. But they'd like to build a 2,200 square foot, basically a subway is what they're looking to, uh, to build on this property. Uh, there'd be associated parking areas and a drive-through window in Q Lane as well. Uh, during the neighborhood meeting for this item before it was uh, application was made, uh, there were concerns from some of the area neighbors about traffic in that area. Uh, they asked if there was going to be a traffic signal at that intersection. Uh, the applicant's representative, uh, Matt Taylor with SEC, said that he would conduct a warrants analysis should this be approved as part of a site plan that would be submitted to our office. Uh, I agree with, with him that it probably wouldn't warrant a signal, but he has committed to doing the warrants analysis, see if one would be required. There would be a right in, right out access only along Shelbyville Pike, and then on Ellis Drive, there'd be the ability to turn left or right to get back. There's a median cut right there at Ellis Drive at Shelbyville Pike, so people could go southbound on Shelbyville Pike if they wanted to. Uh, they had some questions about, the Planning Commission did, had some questions about potential outside seating or bands or anything like that. Uh, those were all answered no, there wouldn't be anything like that, it's just a restaurant use. Uh, there was also some discussion about the traffic in the area, which we discussed already. And following that public hearing, the Planning Commission did recommend approval by a unanimous vote. So before moving on to the other parts of my report, I'll be happy to take any questions. Does anyone have any questions for Doug on these three zonings? I've got one. On the John Brothers rezoning request, uh, it's got to be cleaned up. Is it place? Is it no, it's mostly place? like material storage. He's got like um, some vehicles and trailers and things on there. So it, it's not like industrial waste or anything like that. I mean, cleaned up, in other words, just uh, not cleaned up in a sense that there's like a pollution problem, but cleaned up in the fact that there's a lot of uh, illegal storage going on on the property. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Ahead, Doug. All right, thank you. Uh, moving back to the available lot inventory, uh, you'll see a couple of files on your iPads, one of them being the uh, monthly report that we always prepare and then the uh, year-end report. Uh, just briefly about the uh, the monthly report that we bring, a lot, total lot available, available lots, excuse me, for permitting that are available right now is a little over 1,000, uh, 1,025, that's up slightly from last month. Uh, we're just not seeing as much uh, building permit activity or even plats being recorded right now. Uh, there will be a few larger plats that will be reflected in next month's total. Uh, there's one we just signed the other day and there's a couple in our office right now that we're getting ready to sign. But, uh, so this number will continue to fluctuate. Uh, I, I say that just kind of leading into the uh, year-end report that we provided. This is something that we provided to the Planning Commission. We reply, uh, we, uh, uh, we give to you also uh, every year. Uh, the first part of the report is just simply the, the monthly report you would have received last month, uh, kind of detailing what the uh, available lot inventory was at the end of December of 2022. What I'd like to call your attention to specifically are those uh, series of charts at the end of the year-end report, the last, uh, let's say, you know, let me get to it here, last about six, seven pages or so. Uh, the first thing you're gonna see is there is a chart in there that has been tracking the total available recorded lots from January 2009 through December of 2022. Uh, and this is something I keep up with every month, but uh, you know, for the, the purposes of the year-end report, we just go to the end of December. You can kind of see when we first started tracking this in 2009, of course, we were kind of at the height of the recession at that point. Uh, the highest it ever got that uh, we, when we started tracking it was 1,688 available lots. Then you'll see over the next several years, you know, kind of ebbed and flowed just a little bit, but for the most part, you can see it trended down all the way to low point was uh, 548, and that was somewhere in the range uh, late 2016, early 2017. Then it kind of fluctuated quite a bit, started going up, down, all around, and it's been going up over the last uh, year or so. Of course, we all know with the economy that the way it is right now, rising interest rates, inflation and things, that not surprising that that number would increase uh, the way it has. But that just kind of gives you an idea of how things have been tracking over the last uh, several years. The next chart kind of uh, gives you an idea of the available lots that are still under the development tax versus those that are now under the school's facilities tax. Uh, you'll recall that in 2021, we uh, removed the development tax and went to the school's facilities tax. 
and we knew at some point that this would happen where the development tax lots would continue to decrease, those under the school's facilities tax would continue to increase as the development tax lots were finally used up. That finally happened uh, right around August, September of last year, 2022. Uh, that number for development tax, that number will keep going down, whereas the school's facilities tax, that number will eventually, uh, that'll be all there will be at some point, you know, when all those development tax lots are finally uh, permitted at some point. And the next chart's just kind of a, a different uh, representation of that same information, just kind of showing you what the percentages are. You can see that as time has gone on, the percentage of those lots that are under the school's facilities tax has increased and surpassed those under the development tax. The next chart is our total number of lots recorded. Uh, this is four lots or greater from 2005 through 2022. Uh, the reason we use four lots is prior to our regulation change in 2013, minor versus major plats were defined by the number of lots and four lots was the cutoff. So anything four lots or greater was a major subdivision. So that's what they tracked. And so when we changed our definitions of ma minor and major subdivisions, we just kept the four lots in place. Just to, we could compare apples to apples basically. And you can see, uh, you know, kind of following that first chart that we looked at, you know, during the, the lean years, how it went down to almost nothing, literally uh, 60 in 2011. Then it started kind of going up and down a little bit, but then it reached a, a peak, uh, 943 recorded lots in 2019, and then this year, 931. Uh, with everything going on the way that it is in the economy right now, I probably expect that number to decrease this year, but, you know, we'll just see what happens as the, as the year progresses. And the last two app, uh, charts, excuse me, just kind of give you an overview of what we're seeing for rezoning applications and Board of Zoning Appeal applications over the last several years. Uh, I said this in Planning Commission and I'll say it here tonight, I'm not gonna try to pretend to understand why the rezoning application numbers fluctuate like they do. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Some years we get a lot more than we do others. You know, it's just uh, the way it is. <laughs> the Board of Zoning Appeal cases you see have kind of trend downward over the last several years and the reason for that is because of the fact that we've made some regulation changes where not as much stuff has to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals, so they're just not handling as many applications as they have in the past, kind of streamlining some things in our regulations. So that just kind of gives you just a brief overview of that. So I'll be happy to take any questions on that. Mr. Chairman, just one brief one. The, the rezoning applications, does that include PUDs? Yes, that's all, mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah, every, every one we get. Mm -hmm. um, Everything that you present on your report, so it's commercial, any? Any rezoning applications reflected here. Now I could break it down further into what's a PUD and what's not, I, I, that'd be interesting to know, but uh, uh, yeah, this, these are total applications. Any other questions for Mr. DeMoss? I move to approve. We have a motion in a second. Well, actually, uh, I was going to say that uh, that last item on the fire sprinkler, we're still kind of working through the resolution wording. So, yeah, we're not going to talk about that tonight. So, that, well, that, I was that's hoping what my to, question was, but I, I, I do want to know exactly what you mean from going right now. Is it that you can go to three lots? with sprinklers, but over three, you have to have a hydrant, yeah. and you're requesting to go to six lots. Yeah, the current, yes. Sprinklers, yes. and then after that. Correct, yeah, anything right now, it's three lots or greater, and, and you're correct, and it would change, would go from six lots to greater. Yes, sir, just kind of relaxing it a little bit. Anybody have anything else? Motion and a second on the floor. Everybody in favor of approving his report, say aye. aye. Yes. Motion passed. One quick question, Mr. DeMossi. Yes, sir. Um, just a quick update uh, on the uh, update of the comprehensive plan. Yes, sir. Yeah, we had our first steering committee meeting. Uh, sorry, I didn't, the date escapes me at the moment, just within the last week, week and a half. Uh, very productive meeting, I thought. A lot of good comments, a lot of good discussion. Uh, the next step is we're going to try to schedule a uh, another kind of um, a community input meeting. We're looking right now kind of toward the end of March, possibly using something like Lane Agri Park again. Uh, we haven't formalized that date at this point, but that's kind of what we're looking forward to at this point. I know it's kind of hard to predict, but you have a timeline to when there might be a, 
uh, something ready to present to this committee and to yes, the sir. The, the goal, talking with our consultant team, is the end of the year. Now we'll, again, you know, you know how these things can work. So we'll we'll kind of see how that goes. But that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Doug. Thanks. Appreciate it. The only other thing we have left is solid waste and other business. I think we'll do the other business first. Oh, come on, Bishop. We'll do solid waste. <laughs> the reason I helped you to last is because we've got questions concerning development of some of the transfer stations and whatnot, and I didn't want you to leave without being able to answer the question. Oh, uh, <clears throat> no problem whatsoever. I'm here to serve. Good evening, uh, commissioners, chairman, mayor, Rachel. Um, I'm going to start this evening with, uh, with my reports. Last month, Rutherford County Landfill accepted 120.99 tons of brush for a revenue of $3,644. We managed 1,630 tires for a revenue of $1,893. The total, for a total combined revenue of $5,301 for the month of, of uh, January. I've got a typo in there. Um, Rutherford County Solid Waste disposed of uh, 3,890.61 tons of waste from all sources in the month of January. Uh, 3,320.94 tons were from con convenience centers and 569.67 were from schools. We recycled 375.17 tons from all sources and that's a diversion rate of 9.64% for January. Um, we have approximately 1,000 more tons disposed in uh, January than we did in December from the Christmas holiday. That's the end of my reports. I have a budget amendment and, and a change order to discuss after. Wait just a minute, Mayor Carr. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bishop, can you tell us um, about the wait times for your trucks for leaving the convenience centers uh, on the, la um, the landfill? The, the last couple of weeks we've had wait times uh, at times approaching two hours. Uh, I've had a couple reports of a little over two hours. Uh, we're on average around one hour and 15 minutes. Um, so is that excuse me sir is that from the time they cross the scale from the time they leave or is that time waiting on top that's the time that they cross the scale and clock in till the time they leave the scale have there been any incidents as a result uh, with our vehicles I've at had the landfill? I've had two incidences on top of the landfill involved uh, with the hauling service atomic services actually they all they both happened on the same day um, one of my vehicles was struck by uh, a 53-foot trailer while it was parked waiting in line. And would, that be, would that be an atomic trailer? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, the same day, another vehicle was hit in its box as it was, it was, as it was driving up the hall road by a 53-foot trailer, causing damage to the trailer and putting my truck into the ditch. Um, it had to be lifted with a piece of equipment and reset back on the road and, um, and also so yeah, there was in, in, there, these, in these two instances, Mr. Bishop. What can you estimate the damage to the vehicles? The uh, damage to the to the was anybody injured? By the way, there was there was no one injured. Thank, Thank you, you for asking that. Um, there was neither no injuries for on on any party. The damage to our vehicles is approximately sixteen hundred dollars. That's for one uh, fender. Um, one bumper on the truck that was damaged. The other truck, the other uh, truck instance, it hit the box. So the the damage will be absorbed as normal operation damage and we'll fix it on the landfill. Thank you. Sir. Now continue, Bishop. Um, so that was the, the, my actual reports. I have a couple other items, but if you wanted to, I'd entertain a motion on the reports. Anyone have any questions for Bishop on his reports? Hey. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have two other items, financial in nature. The first one is a budget amendment um, where I recommend we move funds from um, a building purchases line, uh, which we had budgeted for the Haley Road uh, Recycling Center. Uh, 
development, the, uh, we were, I budgeted this for a building, um, and we move it to uh, offset the cost of diesel fuel to provide us with enough fuel to get us to the end of the year. Um, my estimate is $120,000 will get us there. Will the will your next budget year require the 120,000 back into the Haley Road building? I, I haven't decided that yet, Commissioner. I'm looking at uh, that property. I'm having some other issues with the compactor that's on that site, and I'm looking at the long-term feasibility of using that property currently. Um, I'll have some more information in before we come to budget. How much money have you got left in your diesel account? $30,000. Got quite a bit of the year left to go, so I'll make a motion that we forward this to budget. Thank you. Commissioner James? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Commissioner P? Yes. Vice Chairman Piercy? Yes. Motion passes. The next item is, uh, we'll I have two separate change orders for uh, convenience center construction activities. Uh, both are based in the same root cause, which was uh, errors in the original engineering drafts um, and the, we caught the errors uh, they're both for two centers Leanna Center and the Rockvale Center um, both of them were caught prior to pouring concrete uh, there were engineering drawing errors on the on the plans uh, the Leanna pro the Le Leanna error was there was not enough space in between the two in between the islands for vehicles, especially vehicles with trailers to be able to get through. So they had to change the width on those after the forms were already put up. That's when I noticed that there wasn't enough space. Um, got with Peary, they, they fixed, it, fixed it immediately, but they were already out of cost for, for the, the forming and the, the pre-work that was done on the concrete. Make sure I stay on the right one. That was for Leanna, so that was for a total of a uh, change order of Eight thousand eight hundred eighty-eight and seventy-six. Um, the second change order that we're looking at is with, is concerning the Rockvale project, and this was uh, another error in the the grade scale on the on the drawings in terms of the the gradient on the concrete slabs for the for the container boxes to sit on. Uh, we looked at the, after they had them formed up, the forms looked, they were sloped very severely toward the road. Um, we reviewed them and come to find out that they had way too much pitch on them, so they adjusted those to where they made sense to where they'll drain water off, but we won't lose boxes rolling off of the, them when they're on there. The change order amount for, for that uh, was $10,977.12. Um, I've spoke with uh, with with Michael Smith. Um, he has uh, agreed that this should come out of the solid waste assistance fund, or excuse me, the solid waste solid waste uh, uh, general fund budget. Were any of these faults the engineering service that we hired that drew the plans, or was it? us not telling them what we needed. I believe they were they were the engineering, they were faults of the engineering firm. Have we talked to them about reimbursing us for these costs? I have not yet. I would suggest you do that. Yes, sir. Would it not be wise that we let him do that before this is voted on or passed any further? If I had an opinion here, uh, this company has done the work for the county, and they're asking, they're requesting that they get paid for the work that they've done. If we have damages that we need to seek, I don't feel like we should uh, we should hold Perry Construction 
responsible for the damages that, that we're seeking from, an, from the engineering firm. I understand that. I don't hold Perry or the other construction firm at fault. I mean, they're, they're following the plans that they were given. The fault was with the plans, but still, I think that needs to be addressed. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mayor Carr. Uh, Commissioner P, I think your point is well taken, and um, my office will reach out to the engineering firm to find out why, in fact, um, we had an error in the drawings that necessitated a recalculation for the amount of concrete that we needed. Um, so we'll be glad to do that. Also, I think this in part demonstrates why we probably need, the county needs some construction management experience on site, reviewing plans, going over materials, making sure our projects come in on time and under budget. So yeah, we'll, we'll do that for you, Mr. P. Question. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner P, you agree with paying these? You just want to investigate behind, or I, I don't want to. I want to make sure that you're comfortable as budget chairman. I, I don't have a problem with us paying the construction people because they're they're doing their job, and evidently they followed their prints. You know, I've got a problem paying this eighteen thousand dollars or whatever this total is with this engineering firm, and I don't know if it would behoove us to wait. As, Chairman Piercy is saying uh, until we get this resolved with the engineering firm or architect. Thank you. Um, what we can do, we can do a kind of a half measure here, Commissioner P. This is this is going to go into a budget. Let me reach out to them between now and budget, and then I will try to have an answer, some kind of answer or explanation by the time of budget, if that's appropriate. I'm trying I to find a half I just measure. want to make sure we get it addressed. No, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm in complete past, agreement, so. I, but at the same time, I'm like you. It's not the construction firm's fault here, So, uh, but at the same time, we need an explanation. So he, I think this gives me, what, about 10 days? When's, when's Budget meets Thursday. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not 10 days. It's two days. Um, I will try to reach out to them tomorrow. Mr. Phillips? You don't have a motion. Nope. Move to approve the change order request and an asterisk for a report back to this committee on our efforts to recoup funds from engineering. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Who is this? I'm sorry, Rachel, I had a question. Okay, did, you, did, did you say back to this committee? That's a month away. Do, are you coming back to this committee or we're coming to budget? Uh, forgive me for... My motion, and it may not be the best one, Phil, but my motion was to approve the change order request and the asterisk would be for a report back to this committee on our efforts to recoup funds from the engineering firm. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner James. Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Chairman Piercy? Yes. Motion passes. What else you got? I'm open for any questions. Give us a progress report on the Leanna Center. The Leanna Center is going well. The, the concrete is poured. The, the, we're waiting on underground utilities, um, electrical, some conduit has been taken care of. We're still waiting on uh, some of the other utilities and some of the uh, um, getting everything else tied in and connected and some good dry weather to get base stone down, uh, uh, binder and topper for, for asphalt. Any progress made on the landfill road center? 
they've they've made minimal progress. Uh, they started in earnest moving some some uh, soil around today. I think they they tried to move around yesterday. It's been awful wet down there on that site. Uh, everything is staked out. They've uh, uh, addressed their their stormwater permitting responsibilities and uh, and are are moving forward. Anyone else have any questions for Bishop while we've got him? Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Just on a lighter note, <clears throat> I cut, I'm good, I'm good. We have a gentleman hired that will go around and check trash, garbage that has been thrown on the sides of the road. I called him today. He was off in Amelville looking at a project and he come out and he checked the one that I called him about and he actually found information in one bag of trash under probably a two ton load of chairs and tables and household waste that actually had the people's names in it where he could be contacted. And he was also able to involve the TWRA because it was close to a waterway. So these people will be fined very seriously if they're fined on both counts from TWRA and us. And he also found a bag yesterday that had a gentleman's W-2 in it. So he'll be quite easy to find. So uh, I think this committee probably instated that job back under veteran. Is that not right, Jeff? I believe it's so. But it is working. It is working, and, and he works real hard. I just wanted to let y'all know we were making some positive progress on, on that. We have had a request to let uh, Mayor Carr elaborate on negotiations or talks or whatever with Murfreesboro on the transfer station and likeness on what you have. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, um, as, as, as you all know, um, the last time we left this, we had two sites that we were looking at, Landfill Road and uh, Butler Drive, which would be a partnership. Um, the opportunity for the partnership on the transfer station at Butler Drive uh, created some um, financial opportunities that Murfreesboro is willing to split the cost, essentially split the cost on that transfer station. And so that's when you're talking about potentially a 18 to $20 million transfer station um, and splitting the cost, that would be a significant contribution on the part of Murfreesboro. Uh, the challenge there is um, not that they're proceeding with a waste-to-waste -waste solution because Rutherford County is not involved in that at this time. That's not to say at some future date we wouldn't be, uh, but uh, as this committee has determined and as I have concurred, we're not ready to embrace that technology yet. And unlike Murfreesboro that's willing to embrace that, um, in my mind, somewhat unproven because it's not in the field yet, and they're willing to do that, um, we've just, we're kind of taking a wait, wait and see. At the same time, though, uh, Commissioner P led an effort to go to Eckermore, am I saying that correctly? Up in, up with Cookville. And that's just, and, so, and I know that Bishop is constantly uh, scouring new technologies and information about how we can divert waste. Um, and so that is, the bearing of waste is not a long-term solution for this county. It, it's not. Uh, but. As uh, Bishop has said, um, the people that have monitored, monitored the Republic uh, Services Landfill at Walter Hill believe it's going to close sooner than later, and some estimates have it in the two, two and a half year time frame, and that was back last fall. And so whether it's um, the two, two and a half years or three and a half years or four years, uh, the timetable for closure at Middle Point is coming and coming kind of quickly. So we as a county have an obligation uh, by law that we have to do something with our trash. And so this committee has, and the commission has approved the design and engineering of a transfer station, whether it be at Butler Drive or at Landfill Road. 
I had, do have one update in that regard, the, and, and this committee is aware of it, that the triad, the first, the first selection engineering firm came in at $286,000, which was $86,000 over for design and engineering, what we budgeted at $200,000. So, so after um, a series of emails notifying Triad that um, they did not uh, meet the requirements for design and engineering, uh, Nick approved, uh, looked through all that, so we're, we're on legal good ground. We then reached out to, as per this committee's request, reached out to Ray Hoffman, and Mr. Hoffman is now um, going about the design and engineering of a transfer station either at Landfill Road or at uh, Butler Drive, which is yet to be determined. And of course, this committee will uh, make that determination when it becomes appropriate. And with that, I'll be glad to take questions. Mr. Chairman. This Mr. Hoffman is designing the one on Butler Drive. If we so, if we choose to go, that the city doesn't have a design engineer. So on, of record. So we are. So yes, the city is both designing a transfer station and a waste to waste solution um, out on Butler Drive. But because the law is pretty clear, Commissioner, that Rutherford County has the statutory obligation for owning and operating that transfer station when it comes to dealing with Rutherford County waste. I'm unaware, and I've talked to Nick and um, Eric Hennessy on this regard, I'm not sure that we can subjugate that authority to another municipality. Even so, even if we could, I don't think that would be a good idea. So Nick is working with the attorney in Murfreesboro about developing an interlocal agreement, and they're at the very beginning stages of that. I, I mean, I, I haven't even seen a draft of it yet. I know that they've just met to, to flush all that out legally, because we have a we have a significant interest in a transfer station in Rutherford County, whether it be Butler Drive or um, Landfill Road. Having said that. We wanted to go ahead and not wait on that interlocal agreement before we started that engineering design because after talking to Mr. Huffman, he seemed to think that he could prepare 80% of a design of a transfer station and basically locate it just about anywhere because it's essentially, he said, essentially it's just a, it's a, it's a reinforced concrete pad with a metal skin or metal building around it. Now the footprint is going to change. You're going to have to ge do geotechnical. You got site work and that kind of thing. That's going to impact it, but that won't impact the way the facility necessarily functions, if that makes sense. And the the city would accept to build a design that we provide. Would 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 it have to be redesigned if it's on city property? I guess is what I'm getting at. If we, we do don't. all the work and it goes to Butler, would the city say we don't accept? We don't. We haven't the gotten that far yet. Of that person. Yeah. Could, so I don't want to speak for the city. We haven't gotten that far yet. So we'll, if we vote, you you're not vote. You've, you uh, he he was a number two vote getter. He's now. Will, will we start having work orders and start paying him, or are we going to wait until we get a little more clarity on Butler versus? Well, what he's what he's going what he can do now so, because we're up against the clock, and because if if. What Bishop is telling us and what McNolan has told us and what Becky Caldwell has told us that as of late fall last year, Republic was going to close or be full on about two and a half years from then without any expansion. Then we need to get moving on a design and a build of a facility. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to do two things at once here. We're trying to get Murfreesboro and Rutherford County to find out if it's practical to have an interlocal agreement, but at the same time, you have given me the instructions to go ahead and design and engineer a facility, and 80% and of that design and engineering can be done without it being relevant to where it's located. You see what I'm saying? So we're trying, to, we're trying to track these things so we can stay on time with what we believe is going to be an imminent closure at Middle Point. I do. I just hope that the city accepts the engineer drawings that we're paying for 
I would hate for the drawings to become moot because the city says, all right, it's on Butler and we're, we have a design or it has to be a designer of our choice or perhaps they split it with us. Like no, that, that's, an so that's an excellent point and Bishop and I have talked about that very point. And so what we, what we know to be true is Rutherford County produces about 350 to 370,000 tons of trash a year. What we also know to be true is that Murfreesboro, if let's assume for a second their waste to waste solution is wildly um, successful, the maximum that they're going to be able to uh, process is 140,000 tons a year. That leaves Rutherford County with about 230 tons a year of trash that we can still accept with it locally. Okay, so. The idea that Bishop and I had, if this facility transfer station can be located either at Butler or Landfill Road, if we were to locate at Butler Drive and we were to use the Murfreesboro engineering firm's drawing for both the transfer station and Waste Away, and yet we would own and operate that transfer station facility, we potentially, in three to five years or less, still may need another transfer station on the north side of the county somewhere because we still have a lot more trash that we have to deal with. And so it basically, it, we have this design in our pocket that we can use and pull, the, and pull the trigger on when it becomes appropriate, if that makes any sense. So that, that was our logic here. Commissioner P, <laughs> I know you've got a question for me. I may save it for later. No, but, please. Well, I, I do have a couple of questions. One, uh, I thought that the plan was to go ahead and build two transfer stations and that Murfreesboro. Can you, I'm sorry, can you speak up? I thought that the plan was that we were going to go ahead and build two transfer stations. Uh, I thought that's what we voted on last time we talked about this, or at least us doing ours and them doing theirs. but. One thing that bothers me about the concept with waste away, and I, I don't have a problem with waste away or you know whoever we decide to go with or Murfreesboro, they can do what they want to do. But if we are going to be having trash still delivered at say uh, Landfill Road, and we have a transfer station there, if at some time in the future we decide that we're going to dig up that old landfill. I think it would be better for us to whatever we're processing to be located on a property there at Landfill Road. That way we don't have the hauling that would have to take place and to reclaim that property. And that's something I'd like for, you know, at least to be in on the discussion, you know, when y'all are kicking ideas around what we're going to do. I completely agree. And, and, and I don't disagree with, let me go back to your first statement. You thought we, it, we were going to build two transfer stations. So did I. Now, I was, I, what was unclear to me was the timing related to that, okay, because it, if that makes any sense. And so um, when Murfreesboro offered, a, made a fin significant financial offer, you know, I, it's something that we, got, I, we just got to pay attention to. That doesn't mean that that's going to end up working out. We just don't know. I just don't know yet. But at the same time, I don't want to give Nick, I don't want Nick to negotiate interlocal and that drag on for two or three months. And then we sit there and just wait, come to find out we couldn't get an agreement for whatever reason. And now we're, we've lost, you know, 60 or 90 days when we could have already been developing these engineering and site or uh, engineering and design plans for a transfer station to go at Landfill Road, if that makes any sense. It, it, and it does. You know, my confusion was, as I said, I thought there were going to be two, them build one and us build one. But if we agreed to go ahead and build one, I thought they were going to get financially involved and help us with ours. So that's my. That is correct. You understand that correctly. Okay, that's that's what I was thinking. Now, one other thing I want to want to say. Let me just say that's my understanding. <laughs> if that's whether or not that's actually correct is maybe Murfreesboro needs to clarify. But you and I are the same understanding about their their role in helping us out at Landfill Road if we help them at Butler Drive. All right. Well, we'll see how that comes out. The other thing I want to say is I keep hearing these dates kicked around when uh, Middle Point is closing. Their manager's sitting right there. Why don't we just ask him or let him come tell us 
I mean, instead of having somebody outside estimate, I think they'll give us a correct estimate if they can. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to suspend the rules, but I don't know if he wants to talk. I mean, I'm, I'm hitting him blind. He's okay to talk. Second. Ask your question one more time, Commissioner, and I'll make sure I get it right. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I keep hearing mixed signals on how long your landfill will be in operation, yep. and I'd like some clarification on that. Sure. Um, you know, it's a number we, are, I think, are pretty confident in. We hone in on it. It's obviously our business, right? That's what we, uh, we do the analysis on a monthly basis. Um, right now, from today, if nothing changes, and by that I mean if the tons stay the same coming into Middle Point and the density stays the same, how many tons you can put in a certain amount of area, that all stays the same, July of 2027 is the current date we're projecting. Um, I always put that caveat on there because, um, you know, as a business, we have a vested interest in the investment we've made here in Rutherford County, and we intend to be in business in Rutherford County for the long term. So if that means we need to move some tons out, we need to prolong our life, we have that capability, um, and we fully would intend on doing something like that, again, because it's, it's critical that we provide low-cost, efficient, safe waste disposal for this community. When we're talking about the tons coming into the transfer stations and all that, what we sort of forget is there's all these businesses and industry and special wastes that have to come into Middle Point as well. Those transfer stations cannot accept any of that material. So any, any facility that, um, or any business that produces a special waste, any industry and manufacturing, they're left out in the cold with this plan. It's important to us that we have a long-term solution to provide low-cost disposal for those entities. Thank you. Wait a minute. Oh. I've got another question. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's just say it's July 2027. You're shutting the door. Would it be something y'all would consider to, if we were to expand your landfill, to let only Rutherford County waste go into it? Would that be something, an option y'all would consider in the future? And like I said, I'm blindsiding this guy, so he. We hadn't talked at all. Sure. So. No, and I appreciate the question. Cause, I mean, really, I think the way that we come to a solution is by talking and um, by negotiating. And I would say um, there's certainly the possibility that um, we could make that financially work. I think um, the cost to citizens and businesses here to make that work is probably going to be prohibitive, but we can absolutely look at it. Because modern solid waste landfills with a modern fully contained liner system are very expensive to build and operate and maintain. That's why you see these mega sites kind of forming because it is so expensive to operate. So um, again, I think th that option, I would never say no to any option. We want to talk with the county and come to a solution with you, um, one that meets your desires and needs. Um, but of course, there's that cost balance to it always. I understand that. and. and when people ask me about this that I run into out on the street, you know, I, I make it plain to them. First of all, my district surrounds, uh, I guess it's your east side. Yeah. And that's where the pre prevalent winds blow right on my folks there. So I get uh, a lot of the complaints. And, but something that they understand is that we need each other. Yeah. And I don't know if everybody else in this county understands that you need us but we definitely need a place to dispose of our waste. But we can't do that with the smells that we're getting. You know, once we get that taken care of, that's something that I might entertain in the future as an expansion for us. But I wanted your thoughts on it, and I appreciate you giving them off the cuff here. And I, and I totally agree. I think that um, for us to have a productive conversation about the future of Middle Point, if that is in the future for the county here, um, odor has to be part of that discussion and it has to be solved in order for us to move forward with those discussions and we totally agree with that i think you know we're we're uh, very proud of the progress we've made this year alone 
with the odor. Hopefully others who have been in the community and are around us has seen a reduction in odors. I know we're getting a lot of that feedback and we have a very advanced odor monitoring program, which I'd happy to, to show you the data or, or, or talk about it more. I don't want to take over the meeting talking about odor, but um, you know we've seen a 98% reduction in the odor complaints that we're getting. Um, we've seen our gas flows increase 52% since June, since we finished about seven and a half million dollars of expansion to our gas system. We've already started construction this year on more expansions to the gas system, and we are not going to stop until, and I've said it before, I'm misquoted on saying it often, um, but I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm confident that odors will be a thing of the past. We will not be discussing them again. We've made great progress. We will not stop until we get there. And I really appreciate that, and I appreciate the money y'all are putting in it. What I want you to do is say in a month or two from now, you and I get in the car early in the morning, because early in the morning, anytime I drive by Walter Hill or up Compton Road, I smell your landfill. And I know the difference between leachate, that type smell, sure. and other odors. And, and y'all are not to blame for every odor that comes up the road, but. Uh, like I said, when you can cut those smells off early in the morning, and I think, Commissioner Piercy, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I appreciate you uh, sure. coming up and talking to yeah, us. Yeah, always happy to talk. Thanks for asking the questions. Before you leave, I think Mayor Carr would like to ask you a question. Thanks, uh, Chairman. Mike, thank you for uh, being here and be willing to answer questions. This is this isn't a gotcha. I promise. Okay. It's going to sound like it, but it's not. Can't I need, wait. I need, Can't well, wait no, for it not to be I just, gotcha. Yeah. No, I, I, but I need a point of clarification because you and Mr. Amick have been in my office on several occasions, um, not this year, but last year, trying to figure out, you know, what what we could do to move forward as partners in some way, and it was my complete understanding that those negotiations broke down when on behalf of the county commission this community and the mayor's office all of us were in agreement that if there was any possibility of all at all about republican continuing offering services to this community it would only be under the guise of a rutherford county only landfill and it was my clear understanding that mr amick not once but on two different occasions said we just can't make the financial models work are you telling me tonight or telling us tonight those financial models have changed that's not a got you it, it, it did it, seem like a gotcha so let i'm me, sorry let me let me rephrase it just a little bit um i i think our recollection of those discussions are a little different um, we were talking about, but we understand the county doesn't want all of the waste from Metro Nashville, Davidson County any longer. No, no, sir, that's not correct. Okay. We don't want any of the waste from Metro Davidson County. So, so I'll do my best to answer your, your first Thank question. You. Okay. Um, so, you know, as part of those discussions, we're talking about what level of volume reduction has to happen. So as the volume goes down, costs go up for the tons that are coming in. Um, and where does that financial model look? And I think um, what Commissioner P was asking is, is there any scenario where that could work? And I think my response is the same response that we've always had, which is, yes, in theory, there is a scenario where um, we can figure out no tons outside of Rutherford County come in, but the costs are going to be prohibitive. And I don't want to speak for the citizens here and all of the constituents, but um, my guess is putting myself in them sh in their shoes that um, there's not going to be buy-in and support for that. So, but we can certainly get to that point. I think that that's where our discussions left is um, let's let's work through those financials. And I think since that time, there's been a lot of things um, that have, that have sort of transpired outside of that with regard to waste away and transfer stations and other components that have. I think been more of the source of negotiations, not furthering, but as I've said from the beginning, we're here to talk. We'd love to be part of the solution and we're, we're absolutely ready to talk more, Mayor, if that's something you'd like we, to do. We don't misunderstand each other's maybe as much as you think or are implying because my last statement to you and Mr. Amick, both times that we met was don't assume that because the number may be outrageous to you guys, that it was outrageous to us. Give us the privilege of deciding for ourselves 
what that number looks like. And so as a consequence, and that was the last statement that I left both you and Mr. Amick, and we still don't know what that number is. So the model hasn't been prepared and quite honestly, there's a significant part of this community's mindset where the train has kind of left the station because you guys never came back to me with that financial model about what the cost would be to the county for a Rutherford County and a landfill. And we did, we discussed that on several different occasions. So we still don't have a number. And I, I think the county, as outrageous as that number might be, we still would have liked to know what that number was, and we and, don't. And Mayor, we're not done. I mean, we, we wanna come back to you understanding that Republic has a significant business in Middle Tennessee, and it doesn't just include Rutherford County, and there's a hauling component to that, as we've talked about and explained. There's a lot of customers that rely on us for their waste disposal needs a lot. The, the largest number of customers in all of Middle Tennessee. Um, there's a lot of difficult financial implications and modeling that goes into that process. It's not something that we can just sort of turn around on a, on a, on a dime. It's, it's something we have to be very thoughtful about, very pragmatic about, and something that we're continuing to work through. So while you be thoughtful and pragmatic and deliberative in that process, this county needs to move forward. So thank you. Yep. And I, I certainly encourage all you, you guys to make the, the decision you think is best. I do want to reinforce, though, um, the life cycle of Middle Point is not two or two and a half years. So um, when we get two or two and a half years away, I hope that there's no one surprised that Middle Point is continuing to operate for many years into the future. Thank you. The date that you give for 2027, that was just actual burying trash in the ground not closure of the site. Sorry, I'm not sure I understand the Did you not say that your landfill would be full by 2027? I did, yeah, I said, you know, assuming nothing changes and other variables change, what we're currently forecasting is July of 2027 is when we would reach capacity. Of burying trash in the ground. Correct, yeah, reach the landfills permitted. But not the actual closure of the entire site. I, th I think those are one and the same. Even transfer station on the front of your site, it's still one and the same. Well, that would be a transfer station and not a landfill. Right. Right. But it, you won't close. I'm so, I'm, again, I think, again, the year is 2027, July, when the landfill is projected to be full. When landfills are full, we close them. And that would be that would be technically the end again if if nothing were to change. People watching this on television takes the idea that when you say you'll close, they think you're going to lock the front gate. Yeah, I think I'm that's. I'm asking you these questions. Sure, and it's a great question. I appreciate you asking. I think there's a misconception that when Middle Point closes, it's just going to be what is going to happen when Middle Point closes. It's gonna be there for the next 50 years. We are under permit from the state of Tennessee. It's gonna continue producing landfill gas. It's gonna be producing leachate. It's gonna be continue to be environmentally monitored in a significant way, exactly as it is now. It's going to be a, a, a functioning facility, even if it's not accepting trash. A lot of trucks going in and out, a lot of contractors there working, all the same environmental concerns that are there and managed. That's happening no matter what. And I think that's kind of been our what I've tried to uh, convey um, is maybe if we're all sitting here in 1989 looking at today, do we wish Middle Point sat exactly where it is today? No, probably not. I think we could all agree that, but it is where it is, and I think it's important to maximize the value of that asset for this community. Again, it's going to be there, objectively, it's going to be there forever, 50 years. Um, sites aren't getting out of post-closure in 30 years or 50 years. And so it's important for the community to really recognize and understand that. And you're absolutely right. Even when 50 years from now, there's still going to be activity at Middle Point Landfill. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all. I have just to follow up. Mr. Uh, when was your, your last meeting with the mayor that y'all stopped? When, when was it? How long ago was that one? I believe it was just right before the holidays, I believe. Mayor, is that right? I think. Yeah, it was right around the <coughs> Well, I'm asking because I'm interested to see what those numbers could be. Do you think by the next, our next meeting, maybe 30 days, you could 
provide something like that? I, I'm, I'm not prepared to commit to that in 30 days. Again, this is a, this is a, um, an analysis and decision that goes far, far above me and my, my level um, in the organization. But what I can do is let me, let me uh, have a chance to go back and talk to the right people and I would get back to you with an actual um, timeline on when we think we could re realistically get something back. Is that okay? Yes, but I'm looking at it from, this is the perspective I'm looking at it. You've already had 60 days and um, I'd like to see, I'd like to see something just because it does make a difference on us. But regardless, I, I feel like we're going to, we're going to need to get that transportation in limo and ready to go because we don't know. Sure. Just like the mayor was saying, I, so I just wanted to, I would like to see some of those numbers and that's why I just wanted to speak up on. And I, I, what I would say is I don't, I don't believe that if I'm sitting in your seat, I don't believe the urgency for the transfer station is there. I don't, I don't know why you're rushing to build permit design go right now. There is not a two year life cycle for Middle Point Landfill. So we, I think that there is time for this community to go through the process again, methodically, pragmatically, give us a chance to get real numbers that we can all rely on, and then and then move forward. That that's that would be my counter to that point. Well, I can see your your argument on that. My, I would argue back that saying I'd rather have it ready to go and not need it, sure. because just like your your estimation here is if everything stays as they are now. So if that's the case, we'd rather I'd rather be safe than sorry. Sure. And that's just the way I've got to look at it. Totally. I can definitely understand that. Um, I won't take long. I, let me maybe take a few days just to circle back, and I will, I will circle back just as soon as I possibly can. Okay. Uh, then rough quick percentages. How much of the, uh, the trash going in there or the waste going in there is uh, what rough percentage is relative for counties? 30, 35, 30 to 40%, 35%. So about 35%. So then we could probably look at an estimated cost of about... 65 percent increase just a rough roundabout yeah, or, or three times right would be the different way the 300 percent increase probably but I, again i that's how math would work well, i just me, need something I don't to, to gauge with and that's when i'm I, sure I'm looking at projections just something to help to gauge with to make sure that sure. my line of thought is is correct so i appreciate it yeah definitely thank you yep thank you Gentlemen, that concludes Mr. everything. Chairman, yes. I have a comment. Go on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, wait, wait, wait. I've got to bring the meeting back to order. Oh, Mr. Johnson. It was my understanding also that we would have the two uh, transfer stations, the one at Butler Drive and the one possibly at the landfill, but it was my understanding that's not in concrete, no pun intended, uh, we don't have to put our, our transfer station there. Um, so far this, this year, 30.51% of the waste collected um, that would be going to the transfer stations has been from Amalva Road, um, Sand Hill, and Weekly Lane. I'd hate to see 30% or better, and I'm sure by the time we got it built, it'd be more than that because it's increasing daily. I don't want to see that trash hauled to Murfreesboro, on either side of Murfreesboro, from, from the north end of the county. I'd like to see us put the, a transfer station at the north end of the county. To me, it just makes more sense. You've got the not a majority, but you've got a great deal of your trash coming from that end of the county. Uh, it just makes sense to me. And with the understanding that we don't have to put it at the transfer station, at, at the landfill. Uh, but there again, it's my understanding that Director Wagner is pursuing property in the north end of the county. We just haven't had any luck yet, maybe. Um, I would just like to see that 
pursued, you know, as far as trying to locate some property in the north end of the county. I don't care, I'm not saying I want it in Smyrna or it has to be in Laverne. It needs to be at one or the other. It just makes sense. I think the reason that the landfill road site was chosen because it was already county owned property and there would be no more investment to buy property because it's going to cost us a fortune anyway. And I think that's the reason that site was looked at dead on. Any property you buy is going to be expensive. I'm not against looking, you know, if it's something this committee wants to do and look for other site. So, you know. That would, that's fine with me, but if you've already got property, there's 280 acres in the county landfill and about 80 of it has actual trash on it. So we've got somewhere around 200 acres out there that some of it could be used, some of it cannot be used. So the property is there. Yes, sir, and I, I concur with that, but also with over 30% of the, the uh, traffic will be coming from the north end of the county. You've got to look at the cost of that also. And um, if we go into the interlocal agreement with Murfreesboro and do the waste away deal, then you're going to be taking it to the Butler Drive site, or possibly to both sites, to, to our site, and then taking it across town to basically completely dispose of it. Uh, it's just a lot of double handling. Uh, we're definitely gonna use a lot more fuel, a lot more maintenance for trucks. Um, Why well, it just doesn't make sense to me if we can find land, I think it would wash out as far as the additional maintenance for the additional miles and uh, actually fuel costs too. I've got one other comment and I'll let you speak. I have lived with the landfill in, in my district for nine years and it was there long before I become a commissioner. I really don't think you'll convince another location in anybody's district to have any type of situation involving trash. Uh, you know, it may be possible. Uh, most people ha that would probably say, well, we might, probably never had one or never, uh, has never been around one. Uh, I would really, I'd really love to see another place, get it out of my district. But uh, not, I don't think you'll find it. I really don't. But that, that still won't keep you from looking or, or Bishop from looking or, or whatever. Well, the key to any project would be education. We just have to educate the people on what we are proposing anywhere we put it. Now, if you keep talking about trash, like it's in your district, yeah, nobody's gonna agree to that. Absolutely not. I mean, but that's not what we're talking about. We're, we are talking about that trash, but we're not talking about it piled up and moved around and smelling. There's supposed to be, we've been told at the transfer stations, there'll be no, no trash outside it will all be dumped on the floor or in chutes. It will be bailed or whatever. There's no leachate. There's, there's nothing other than another basically sort of a warehouse building. You have trucks going in and out, but there again, trucks go in and out of warehouses. We have warehouses all over the country. Um, trash issue, if people are educated by this commission, and we put, put out the information, I think it would sell when they realize um, free trash is definitely going away. It's definitely going away and, and people need to realize that. We haven't really publicized that. It's been mentioned, but we know there's gonna be a cost to our trash, uh, dis disposing of our trash. We know that. Everybody in the county needs to wake up and realize that. And it's our job to wake them up. 
Mayor Cord, you have a comment? I just wanted to echo what you said. Um, it's going to be difficult, not impossible. Uh, we have at the landfill road, I'm going to try to say this right, Bishop, rule by permit. Am I saying that right? Permit by rule. It's already zoned for that. And so we don't need any, we don't need any approval or zoning change or anything like that. You're exactly right, Commissioner. It would be great if we could find 15, 20 acres between Laverne and Smyrna that the community would embrace to allow us to zone heavy industrial to put a transfer station. Uh, there is leachate. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a consequence of hauling trash, the liquid coming out of those trash. There is leachate. Um, you do have trucks that are enclosed, but tra trash still, unfortunately, gets away from the trucks on occasion. Um, it's not impossible. Uh, it's something that I've asked Bishop, quite honestly, to look into, alternative sites. You know, we're constantly, uh, my office is constantly looking for alternatives, options, never relying on, while we pursue once a solution, we're constantly trying to find, are there other better solutions available while we pursue this solution? And so while we're pursuing right now Butler Drive and Landfill Road, and we're focused on a transfer station, we're also focused on diversion. That's, that is the long-term solution. That is, and so we're doing that. It may not be waste away today, and we're not, by the way, I wanna make sure that this committee is clear, we are not entering into an interlocal agreement with Murfreesboro about waste away. We are not. We, we will be entering into an interlocal agreement about the transfer station at Butler Drive, potentially, that would adjoin waste away two entirely separate things. So when you say interlocal agreement with Murfreesboro about waste away, that is, that is, I just want to make sure because we're on TV that we say this exactly right. And so anyway, but to your point, you're right. If there's an opportunity to put the solution in, in the northern, north, uh, west part of the county, absolutely, because that's where the, the growth is. And, and we are, we are looking, we absolutely are looking, but we can't wait uh, in the meantime, so we're going to push forward at the same time while we look. Does that help? What did I not say that you wanted to hear? Yes, I missed something, but I know I didn't mention waste away as far as we were going to take it to waste away. You, you mentioned uh, uh, interlocal agreement with waste away. Murfreesboro. Right, Murfreesboro Waste Away. And so we're not entering into an interlocal agreement with Murfreesboro Waste Away. Oh. It would be interlocal agreement with Murfreesboro Transfer Station. Yes. And we haven't heard anything up to this date about that. I beg to differ, but we'll just have to disagree on that. Is there anything else for the even forgot what committee I'm sitting at. The Public Works and Planning Committee. Our next meeting will be March the 7th at 5.30 in these chambers. This meeting is adjourned.